Dry bulb temperature and wet bulb temperature are both essential in understanding air properties, especially in HVAC applications. We'll explain these two temperatures and how they relate to evaporative cooling and relative humidity using a psychrometric chart. Dry bulb temperature is the temperature of the air measured by a regular thermometer without considering moisture. It's measured using a standard thermometer exposed to the air but shielded from direct solar radiation. Dry bulb temperature is what people commonly refer to as air temperature. It indicates the heat level of the air and is crucial for thermal comfort and HVAC system design. When trying to understand the current air conditions, one must also look at the wet bulb temperature, not just the dry bulb temperature as it accounts for humidity and provides a more complete picture of heat stress and cooling potential. Wet bulb temperature is the temperature a parcel of air would have if cooled to saturation, 100% relative humidity, by evaporation. The wet bulb temperature will always be lower than or equal to the dry bulb temperature because evaporation absorbs heat. It's measured by wrapping a wet wick around a thermometer bulb and allowing evaporation to cool the bulb with the resulting temperature reflecting the cooling effect of moisture in the air. As water evaporates, the temperature drops, and this lower reading is the wet bulb temperature. Wet bulb temperature helps assess the amount of moisture in the air. It is used in processes like evaporative cooling and determines the cooling efficiency in such systems. Wet bulb depression is an indicator of how much the air can cool down through the process of evaporation. The larger the temperature depression, the drier the air, which means it has more capacity to absorb moisture. We can see on this psychrometric chart that a dry bulb temperature of 85 degrees Fahrenheit minus the wet bulb temperature of 55 degrees Fahrenheit equals a wet bulb depression of 30 degrees Fahrenheit or 16 degrees Celsius. Wet bulb depression equals dry bulb temperature minus wet bulb temperature. A high wet bulb depression means that there is significant potential for evaporative cooling. For example, in hot, dry environments, where the dry bulb temperature is much higher than the wet bulb temperature, evaporative cooling, like using a swamp cooler, is very effective. A low wet bulb depression, where dry bulb temperature is close to wet bulb temperature, indicates the air is near saturation with moisture, so there is less cooling potential through evaporation. Relative humidity is the percentage of moisture the air holds compared to the maximum it can hold at that temperature. When the dry bulb temperature and wet bulb temperature are close together, the relative humidity is high because less evaporation is occurring. When dry bulb and wet bulb temperatures are far apart, the air is dry and relative humidity is low as there is more capacity for moisture to evaporate into the air. We can see that the relative humidity is at 10%. If the wet bulb temperature increased to 60 degrees Fahrenheit or 15 degrees Celsius, then the wet bulb depression decreases to 25 degrees Fahrenheit or 14 degrees Celsius. We can see that the relative humidity has increased to 20%. If the wet bulb keeps climbing and the dry bulb stays the same, the wet bulb depression keeps shrinking while the relative humidity increases. This informs us that as the wet bulb gets closer to the dry bulb temperature, the relative humidity increases. For efficient use of a swamp cooler or evaporative cooler, a wet bulb depression of at least 15 degrees Fahrenheit to 20 degrees Fahrenheit, 8 to 11 degrees Celsius, or more, is generally required. This means the difference between the dry bulb temperature, ambient air temperature, and the wet bulb temperature should be at least 15 degrees Fahrenheit, 8 degrees Celsius, indicating low enough humidity for effective evaporation and cooling. Evaporative cooling is best suited for hot, dry climates with low humidity. With a 15 degrees Fahrenheit or 8 degrees Celsius wet bulb depression, the relative humidity has reached 47%. This is at a 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 degrees Celsius wet bulb. With a 10 degrees Fahrenheit or 5 degrees Celsius wet bulb depression, the relative humidity has reached 63%. This is at a 75 degrees Fahrenheit or 24 degrees Celsius wet bulb. What will happen when the wet bulb equals the dry bulb temperature? What will the relative humidity or dew point be? With a 5 degrees Fahrenheit or 2 degrees Celsius wet bulb depression, the relative humidity has reached 80%.
This is at an 80 degrees Fahrenheit, or 27 degrees Celsius wet bulb. We can see there is very little wet bulb depression, and at this point swamp coolers are worthless, as there is very little room for more evaporative cooling to occur. Here the dry bulb and wet bulb temperatures are the same at which point we have 100% relative humidity, and we have also reached the dew point line where condensate occurs. The wet bulb depression is zero because the dry bulb and wet bulb temperatures are the same. Dew point is the temperature at which air becomes fully saturated, 100% relative humidity, and moisture condenses into liquid, dew. If dry bulb temperature falls to the dew point temperature, condensation occurs, leading to dew or fog. When the wet bulb temperature is close to the dry bulb temperature, the air is near saturation, and the dew point is close to the current temperature, meaning high humidity levels. If you found this video helpful, be sure to check out our HVAC and plumbing estimating spreadsheets to streamline your construction bidding process. Check out our HVAC, electrical, and plumbing construction forms to help you run your business and explore our online courses for in-depth training. You'll find everything you need to level up your skills and efficiency. Links are in the description below. If you like that video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.